Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the seventh Simon Cox Student Design Competition, brought to you by Technology for Living. I'm Ken Kramer, board member for TFL. The competition annually celebrates excellence in assistive technology innovation. Post-secondary students across BC collaborate with people living with disabilities to provide solutions to everyday challenges. Why do we name the competition after Simon Cox? Well, Simon was a great friend, an excellent listener, and an amazing community leader in the disability community. He lived his life in service to others. He helped find solutions for so many people living with physical challenges by enabling them to live independently outside of institutions, when at that time, that was not looked upon favorably by the medical establishment. Simon initiated this competition, giving BCIT biomedical students an opportunity for real life work experience and an opportunity to buy solutions to problems in collaboration with the people facing those challenges. I know that Simon would be extremely proud of this competition and its impact on both students and members of our disability community. Here's our Executive Director of Technology for Living, Ruth Marzetti, to introduce to you our MC for today who will be taking us through the competition this year. Over to you, Ruth. Thank you, Ken, and welcome everyone to the Simon Cox Student Design Competition. This is the seventh competition and the second time that we've had the competition online. It's going to be livelier than ever. Um, we've got more students participating, and so we're looking forward to a very exciting competition. Good luck to the judges deciding who the winners are. I would like to introduce you to our MC for the competition. Our MC is Marco Pasqua. Marco is an award-winning entrepreneur. He's an accessibility consultant and an inspirational speaker. He comes from the community that we work with. He's been involved as a spokesperson, helping to spread advocacy for people across Canada living with disabilities. He is an accessibility and inclusion consultant. He has worked with some of BC's largest change-driven business leaders who are champions for more accessibility, inclusive workplaces. And it's through these experiences that he's paved the way for all of us Canadians to have a universal access to the programs, services and places where we live, work and play. I know that Marco is as excited to be as part of this competition as we are to have him. So welcome everyone to our MC, Marco Pasqua. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Ruth. And as a guy with a background in technology and overall interest in disability innovation, I'm so excited to host today. Technology for Living has had a series of videos on their website showcasing the students' designs. And today is the day that we'll be announcing the four winners from each category. You know, this competition is open to students from all post-secondary institutions in BC, and we had an increased level of participation this year. Students from UBC Okanagan, UBC, UVic, SFU, and BCIT have all entered teams, and we have an exciting competition ahead. We have projects ranging from a laser sound and cueing module to a detachable mechanism that will convert regular wheelchairs into, get this, all-terrain wheelchairs. But sorry, Ian, there's no flying wheelchairs yet. Let's take a look at where some of the projects are coming from this year. If you haven't checked them out online, you can look at all of the project submission videos on the Simon Cox website. The link is being posted in the chat. Now, of course, an essential component to any competition is the judges. I had the opportunity to sit down with them this year and ask them what they're looking for in this year's submissions. Let's hear what they had to say. Um, 
So, hello gentlemen, it's nice to see you. I understand you're the judges for this year's competition. I, I really have to ask, what is it that you're looking for as far as you're judging this year? Like, you know, when the competitors are thinking about, you know, how to bring their best self to the competition, what is it that you guys are specifically going to be looking for? Uh, what I'm looking for is the team spirit and obviously keeping in mind that we're talking about assistive technologies and how they are, the feasibility as well as uh, uh, keeping in mind that how practical the solutions are. So I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, the team spirit, their presentation, um, their, uh, their research behind their product, as well as um, how they present the product and well, what is the elevator pitch and how are they doing it. I'm really looking forward to that. That's awesome. Wayne, I know that uh, both you and Ian are often looking at, you know, assistive technology and sort of innovative things that are game changers. Would you say that you're along the same lines as McKinder as far as what you're looking for as a judge? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I think I think for me, um, the the usefulness is always extremely important. Um, uh, usefulness and and innovation. We haven't seen this done before, uh, or if we've seen it done before, this it's kind of elevated uh, what's been done before. Uh, but for me, also also, I love to see uh, the technical side of it. So uh, it might look great, it might function great, but take the screws off and show me what's inside, and 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 let's kind of dig into it a bit more. So. I'll, were you the type of guy that as a child would always deconstruct your vacuum and then try to put it back together? My bike was always in pieces. Yeah. Okay, I, that's what I thought. I could kind of get that feeling from you. Absolutely. And Ian, I know your house is decked out to the nines with various technology and stuff. So what would be your dream along the same lines in terms of what you're looking for as you're judging? What would be a new way to, to reinvent the wheel for you, so to speak? Yeah, I'm always looking for, for new ideas. And uh, this year, I'm also really focused on that peer connection. I, I'm really excited to see how, uh, how that connection works and um, the interaction and, and how it really helps our members. I think that's number one. Ian, what are you excited about? You know, it's one thing to kind of base that on what you're going to be judging on, but what are you actually excited um, that they're going to bring maybe new or exciting this year? Uh, there are so many new projects here that uh, honestly, it's, it's going to be tricky. I think that they all have... Um, some some new fresh ideas and uh i think that yeah i'm i'm just ready i'm ready to get started here as somebody who's a regular uh, everyday chair user manual chair user having to kind of innovate adapt even adapt the kind of work that i'm doing having innovations that support me in making those adaptions and doing things differently i think is incredible so this competition is ripe and ready for that kind of change uh Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time and energy, and I really look forward to this year's competition. All right, thanks for having us, Marco. Look forward to it. Thank you. No worries. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. <laughs>
We just witnessed in a few minutes what took hours and hours of planning, research, and testing. Look at the efforts that these students have made to improve the independence and enhance the overall well-being of people living with disabilities. TIL has been doing this for years, over 50 years in fact, and the program is housed at Technology for Living. Assisted technology creates opportunities for increased independence for BC residents with physical disabilities. Now, while the judges deliberate, please enjoy this video. Hey Alexa, open Netflix. Hey Alexa, move right. Nima uh, is just an average boy like any other 13 year old. He has his hobbies, he likes hockey. He plays uh, something called power soccer with his friends and his independence is very, very important for him. And thanks to some of the improvements we've seen around the house, he has improved his life, he has improved his life. Super happy to have a boy like Nima. Hello, my name is Nima Nafisvand and I'm 13 years old. What I like to do for fun is plane collecting. I have a big plane collection. I like to play video games. I like to play tag with my friends. Nima was born in 2008. Nima was uh, diagnosed with a condition called Duchenne muscle dystrophy. Our journey started from age two when he was diagnosed. Unfortunately, at age five, he lost his mobility. Then and then is where with technology starting to play a role in our lives. These technologies help me become more independent and improve my quality of life. There's less stuff that my parents need to help me with. I can, I can do them by myself and be, be more independent. He can do things on his own, which really helps his confidence. He feels like he's part of a community and family. He doesn't have that helpless feeling. Independence is really important for their health as well and their mental, especially their mental health. Thanks for helping me be more independent. I like being able to do things for myself. A competition like this wouldn't be possible without the funding from our generous supporters. We'd like to acknowledge our supporters. The BC Rehab Foundation, the Kinsman Foundation of BC, RBC Foundation, KPMG Canada, Axis Insurance Group, as well as the Loan Foundation. Through the commitment and vision of the Kinsmen, the Technology for Independent Living program was formed in 1970. Their ongoing support has been critical to the organization's success. The BC Rehab Foundation is also committed to closing the gaps between people with and without disabilities. They have a long-standing relationship with TFL, supporting this competition as well as the TIL program and the Automatic Door Opener program. Any individual can donate to this program at Canada Helps under Technology for Living. Let's hear about what the competition means to our supporters. Hi, I'm Walter Pale. I'm the Regional Managing Partner for KPMG in the Greater Vancouver area. We're uh, one of BC's largest professional services firm, uh, delivering tax, audit and advisory services throughout the province. Uh, and we're also part of uh, BC's Accessible Employers and the President's Group. And at our core, um, we are looking to build an inclusive and accessible uh, workplace. But it's not just about workplaces, it is about the community. Uh, it, and it's about the home. And when we were approached to, uh, to sponsor the Simon Cox competition, we were really inspired uh, by its purpose and by bringing together students uh, and uh, design thinking and uh, uh, industrial design and uh, uh, science to try to create some really positive outcomes to uh, assist those with disabilities in having a more accessible place at home and in the community. And so uh, we're yeah, very inspired to be part of it. Uh, this year it aligns with our values uh, and uh, really interested to see who 
uh, who the winners are and really everybody who's participated uh, in this wonderful competition. I'm so excited to be able to share with you a donation on behalf of RBC Future Launch. In support of the Technology for Independent Living program and their annual Simon Cox Design Competition, students from across BC entering this amazing contest. The design assistive technology and home innovation for those with severe physical disabilities that restrict the mobility. This competition not only increases innovation in the space of assistive device and automation, but also delivers practical work experiences for participating entrances through working and collaborating with a diverse group of individuals across multiple industries. Please allow me to extend my sincere congratulations to all the participants this year. Now the moment we've all been waiting for, talking about the awards. Terry LeBlanc is a board member for Technology for Living and a long-term champion of the TIL program. Innovations from the TIL program have helped Terry to live more independently in his own building. When he's not being an activist for the community, Terry can be found sailing at Jericho, enjoying the rooftop garden at his home, or going to the theater when we're not in the midst of a pandemic. We are proud Terry is here to present the Walt Lawrence Award for Innovation. Take it away, Terry. Thank you, Marco. Well, Walt Lawrence was an active member, board member of TIL up until last year. And I'm particularly proud to present this award to Walt because he was one of the giants, the other one being Simon Cox, who they allowed me to live independently in the community. I met Walt when uh, this young man in a wheelchair, manual wheelchair, was wheeled up at my bedside and introduced himself. And, uh, and you know that he had such a presence that I knew life would go on after I got out of this hospital bed. This award recognizes the team that showcased innovation. I will now turn it over to Mukinder to announce the winner of the Walt Lawrence Award. I think uh, innovation is very important when it comes to accessibility and uh, assistive technologies. Um, I truly believe in students who received this award this year to give a pat on their shoulders and to be proud of themselves because uh, there was a lot of efforts uh, in planning, uh, designing and executing their project that can make a real difference in somebody's life. This year, the Innovation Award goes to Hello everyone, we are Rainscape, a team of biomedical engineering master students from the University of British Columbia. Our team consists of Maria Laura Romero, Mary Jo Whelan, Evelyn Armour, Michelle Ashraf, and Maria Hernandez. People Living with Disabilities is a big group, and through our research and collaboration with our partner Praxis, we decided to focus on individuals who use a power wheelchair and have limited upper limb mobility, specifically a spared tenodesis grasp. Through multiple brainstorming sessions and surveys, we identified that there is a lack of effective rain coverage options for wheelchair users, which limits their ability to independently leave home when it's raining. Living in BC, this is a common problem. Power wheelchair users with little arm strength and finger dexterity have a hard time using current products such as umbrellas, ponchos, and existing rain cover solutions for wheelchairs, which do not cater to this specific demographic as they require assistance to use. Our goal is to design a product that will keep the user dry, can be used independently, eliminating the need for assistance, and increase the user's autonomy. Our prototyping began with cardboard, wooden popsicle sticks, and a whole lot of hot glue. Once we had an idea of what our frame would look like, 
we were able to program stepper motors to move our frame components forwards and backwards. Once we secured a power wheelchair, we attached our components and tested them, including using a shower curtain as our initial cover material. Next, we upgraded our cover to include metal frames and waterproof fabric and designed and 3D printed a motor enclosure that attached the frame to the chair. With more testing and iterating, we were able to modify our design components to account for both user feedback and material constraints. Our current solution seen here uses two gear motors situated in a 3D printing enclosure. It is attached to a bracing bar that sits behind the wheelchair seat. A cover consisting of metal wire frames and both clear and opaque waterproof material provides sun and rain protection. With the press of a button, the cover deploys forward, with the user having to depress the button to maintain motion as a safety feature and a second button to move the cover in a backwards direction. We are very proud to share the accomplishments we have achieved in this project so far. We designed a unique user interface that allows the canopy to be attached to the power wheelchair. We successfully automated the development and storing mechanisms of the canopy. We designed a method that gives users full control of the amount of rain coverage desired. And lastly, we performed extensive stakeholder outreach. This includes an occupational therapist and hosting a focus group in early April. Moving forward, we'd like to make some changes to our design based on feedback. Firstly, we'd like to implement a gutter system to direct water away from the user, make upgrades to the frame and materials, determine how to protect the electric components on the chair, allow for the height and width of the canopy to be adjustable, dive deeper into the button interface options, look at how to use the chair battery as the power source, and lastly, physically test our device with power wheelchair users. We'd like to thank Praxis for their support during this project and Taylor from Technology for Living for his excellent advice and tips on making our design customizable. Thank you. Thank you to Simon Cox and Technology for Living for this award. We're honored to be recognized for our work over the past eight months and grateful to have been part of this competition. We'd like to thank the Praxis Spinal Cord Institute, specifically James, Chris, John, Richard, and Sam for their continued support, as well as individuals from the focus group for their valuable feedback. We'd also like to thank Roger and Tanya from the UBC School of Biomedical Engineering, Engineers and Scrubs program. Thank you. Thank you. A huge congrats to our award recipients. Now moving on to our next award, which holds a great place in the hearts of our members as we honor one of our favorite people who is no longer with us. Here's one of Nancy Lear's best friends to present the Nancy Lear Achievement Award. Thank you, Margo. I'm Susan Dessa. I started off as Nancy's care aide and neighbor, and we fast became best friends. Nancy was a fierce advocate for persons with disabilities. She was always willing to help people learn, who wanted to learn what it was like living on a ventilator. Nancy was born with muscular dystrophy. She was straight invented at age 23. I knew Nancy to be a warrior who battled life to make changes not only for herself, but for all persons with disabilities. And she won. She never stopped trying to make changes to the healthcare system to make it inclusive for everyone. Her passion was traveling. We, sh we went to many countries together and I have many fond memories of our adventures. We had a lot of fun together. Indeed, her motto was, move with me or get out of the way. I proudly stood by her side. Nancy worked closely with peers and students to come up with designs to help members in the community become more independent and less reliant on others. She volunteered for everything she believed in. Nancy was a personification of independence and love. To whomever receives the Nancy Lear Achievement Award, I want you to know that this is truly special. And I congratulate you on your achievement. You've earned it. I will now pass it back to Marco to announce the winner of the Nancy Lear Achievement Award for 2022. Thanks, Susan. And with that, I'm proud to announce that the winner of the Nancy Lear Achievement Award is...
Freezing is a temporary, involuntary inability to move. Freezing is a symptom of Parkinson's disease that occurs for some people. When freezing occurs, one may be unable to move for seconds or even minutes. It has been described as if your lower body is stuck while your upper body is free to move. As of today, it is still not known what exactly causes freezing to occur. However, freezing is most likely to occur when walking. Walking is a sequential and repetitive process where a particular series of body movements enable us to walk. However, if a body movement gets disrupted, the whole process can stop. Freezing is common in scenarios where individuals walk towards or around objects, change walking directions, or are in crowded environments. Freezing may get worse if individuals feel anxious, feel stressed, or lose concentration. One approach to rehabilitating freezing is through the use of external stimuli known as sensory cueing. Cueing provides rhythmic or goal-directed motor control, enabling individuals to more quickly overcome freezing episodes. Three common types of cueing are tactile, the use of the rhythmic touch, audio, the use of the rhythmic sound, and visual, the use of visual projections. Our device, Parkinson's Triple Cueing Module, or PTCM, would be used to provide a visual, auditory, and or tactile stimulus during a freezing episode for a person experiencing Parkinson's disease. It will be a battery-powered device that can be attached to any style of walker. The device would project a line on the ground with a laser pointer for a visual cue, play rhythmic sounds for an auditory cue, and produce rhythmic vibrations for a tactile cue. The cues would be activated by a control system near the walker handle, and the user would be able to choose from a combination of all three cueing methodologies for a total of six combinations. Our original idea stems from the suggestion of a peer who experiences Parkinson's disease and freezing symptoms. After reading their testimonial, four important things were evident. One, using visual cues like lasers does have benefits, as their homemade laser module greatly benefited the peer. Two, usability in the form of easy to access controls is critical. Three, Price of current technology is a significant barrier that prevents individuals from accessing quality of life enhancing equipment. And four, there is interest in combining more than one queuing methodology into a single system. Compared to other devices that aim to assist patients who experience freezing episodes, our product, PTCM, is able to achieve the most functionalities with minimal cost. Diving into our design, shown here is our electronic system which includes both the auditory and tactile cueing modules, and it is housed in an enclosure on the walker handle. The enclosure's proximity to the user enhances usability and promotes faster system activation times. Tactile features on the enclosure surface allows users to distinguish controls without looking at the system. The enclosure is easily adaptable to varying walker styles as it is attached to the handle by adjustable Velcro straps. Going into the electronics a bit more, our device is controlled by an Arduino, a readily available microcontroller unit. The code uses basic logic to turn on cues that the user were like. The three switches control the laser, audio, and vibration, while the knobs allow the user to vary the volume and pace of the audio and vibration. This allows the user to adjust the beat to their desired pace. The electronic components are easily obtainable, and the whole system runs on a AAA battery pack. Our visual cueing module utilizes a laser that is housed within a light dispersing enclosure. The enclosure enables a bright line to be projected on the surface in front of it. Similar to the electronic enclosure, the laser module is mounted using Velcro straps to facilitate easy attachment and detachment of the module from a walker frame. Controlling the module is done from the electronics enclosure, which resides near the walker handle. As seen by the physical prototype here, the laser shines brightly in front of the user when walking, allowing for a clear visual cue in the event of a freezing episode. Through further physical prototyping, the laser module will be integrated along with the rest of the system to produce a final product of the Parkinson's triple cueing module for Parkinson's patients. Thank you. We are honored to have won an award at this year's Simon Cox Student Design Competition. There were many amazing and promising projects presented, and we want to congratulate all teams for being here today. We'd like to thank the peer who submitted this excellent idea and to the peer's daughter for the comments and insight that helped us get our project started. We'd also like to thank my sister, Amanda, for her professional feedback throughout our design phase. Finally, thank you, Professor Mifflison, for enabling us to complete our project and compete in the competition. We hope to continue iterating on our device's prototypes so that we can bring our device to those in need. Wow, a huge congratulations to the Nancy Lear Award winners. 
TFL peers had the opportunity to review all the projects and vote on the one that they thought was best at the Pathway to Independence peer group meeting. It is with great honor that I have Taylor Danielson, a technician at TFL, to present the next award. The Peers' Choice Award is earned by the team which captures the hearts and minds of our peers. The design is chosen for its originality, creativity, and ingenuity in enabling our peers to achieve new levels of independence. This year, the award was voted on by the peers of the Pathways to Independence group. We are grateful for the peers and their support in sharing their ideas for design challenges and working as partners with student teams. I am proud to pass it over to Ian Price, who will announce the winner of this year's Peers' Choice Award. Thanks, Taylor. I'm pleased to announce that the team winning the Peer Choice Award is... Okay, Google, P. Okay, Google, stop P. Wow, to be acknowledged by your peers is a huge honor. You should all be very, very proud. And now it's that time that we've all been waiting for to learn a little bit more about the Simon Cox Award. And here today to talk a little bit more about it is the Chair of Technology for Living, Christine Gordon. Christine, take it away. Thank you, Marco. It's my privilege to present the Simon Cox Principal Award. Before we do so though, I just wanted to share a little bit with you about Simon Cox. Simon was one of the founders of TIL uh, and he was uh, a mentor, a leader, a person who was insatiably curious, who was always interested in people's lives. He was particularly a problem solver. He always believed that there was a solution to any problem and he would not rest until he found it. He loved young people uh, and he believed in young people and their ability to take over the world and to do so with grace and with style. Um, we miss Simon so much, but we know through this Simon Cox student design competition that we honor him in the best way possible. So if you are the winner of the Simon Cox Award, you have won something very special. Um, and now I'll pass it over to you, Wayne. Uh, Wayne Pogue, who is our team lead at TIL and a judge of this contest, to announce the award. Thank you.
The Simon Cox Principal Award is important because not only does it get technology into the hands of our members, um, but it also allows students and, and schools to be involved in assistive technology, creating these, these amazing solutions we're seeing today. The level of talent we've seen from the teams this year has been very impressive. Uh, we've seen a lot of creativity and a lot of passion for the projects we're working on. Uh, the importance of the Simon Cox Principal Award um, is not only important to our members who might be able to utilize some of this technology moving forward, but I think it also shows the teams and, and the schools uh, and how much they're being getting involved in assistive technology to help the community. It is now my pleasure to announce the Simon Cox Principal Award goes to Hi, we are Capstone Group 38 from UBCO, and our project was to create a catheter drainage system for our client, Misha, to give him a little bit more independence. So this project began when the Simon Cox Foundation put us into contact with our client, who is an individual currently living with multiple sclerosis, and he has expressed his need to us to independently drain his catheter storage bag. He is currently reliant upon a living carrot to physically open the drainage valve whenever the bag needed emptying. This situation of being reliant on a caregiver for physical dexterity, so it leads many people to schedule their fluid intake throughout the day or to just drink no fluid at all until they know someone can be there at the end of the day to drain their catheter bag. That kind of fluid intake can greatly increase the chances of developing a catheter-associated urinary tract infection. We saw this problem as an opportunity to grant our client and possibly others out there greater independence through a solution that requires minimal physical dexterity in order to be able to drain their own catheter bags. We learned from some past solutions that the user were satisfied with buzzing control. In addition, they will have strong sense of safety if there is a buzzer alarm system. This alarm system will help user to understand which stage are they in the joining process. We also found some downsides from these past solutions, including not enough joint speeds and no data tracking. For the user to initiate drainage, we decided on a button. This design was borrowed from another open source adaptability project and then modified to fit on a wheelchair. In our analysis, we also looked at other interfaces like a mobile app and voice recognition, but found them not robust enough for long-term use. To mitigate accidental drainage, the button goes through the following sequence. Once a user initiates the draining process, this valve is open. This valve was chosen due to its high flow rate at low pressure, which allows the bag to be drained quickly. To monitor the flow, a flow sensor was added. This signals for the valve to close once the bag is completely empty. This is also beneficial over a timer because it allows the user to get back to their day in the fastest time and will notify them if there is no drainage indicating a blockage. Another benefit of adding a flow sensor is that we were able to track the waste throughout the day. This is very important with health tracking. In the future, we plan to integrate the data collection into a database so the user or care staff are notified of a problem. This would include dehydration or more serious urinary tract issues. Due to the large valve which reduces drain time and the flow sensor for data tracking, the final design was larger than past. To find a suitable location, we scanned the chair and made a 3D model of it. From there, we were able to create a 3D printed enclosure to house all the components. The housing was then attached by a welded bracket in order to hold the housing out of the range of the tilt chair and the suspension. The bracket was attached by a rail on the side of the chair by a T-locking mechanism. Urinary tract infections can also occur when bacteria enter the bladder through the catheter itself. While unlikely that our device would introduce bacteria into the catheter system, we identified potential risks and made feature selections, design choices, and material choices to mitigate those risks. Our initial disinfection procedure was a weekly vinegar solution rinse, which degraded the rubber gasket in the valve of the device during testing. 
We performed materials testing to identify an appropriate disinfectant solution. We divided the gasket into several samples and soaked those samples into candidate solutions. Antimicrobial silver and hydrogen peroxide showed positive results and eventually hydrogen peroxide was chosen. In our final device, we've addressed the risk of bacteria through the mitigating design features and the weekly hydrogen peroxide rinse. How would this improve your quality of life? Um, it does improve my quality of life. It lets me go out for a leak anytime I like, or need to instead of depending on someone. Makes me very independent. like to say thank you so much for this award. We are very grateful to be a part of this competition and for the platform you provided so we were able to meet with our client. Our design isn't perfect yet, but we intend to keep on continuing our progress and um, post our progress along the way. We'll communicate this through Technology for the Living and our YouTube video that we posted, and we'll make our designs available on Instructables and MakersMakingChange.com. I just want to say thank you again to the organizers for putting on such a great event and I hope everyone has a great weekend. Hi, this is Katrina Chan, BC's Minister of State for Child Care and MOA for Burnaby Lohi. I want to give my sincere thanks and really honored to have this opportunity to thank all the team members of Technology for Living for hosting the Simon Cox Student Design Competition. I also want to thank all the participants and winners, of course, for using your talent to find creative design solutions for BC's individuals living with diverse abilities and to support their independence. Thank you so much for your great work. And this is such a great partnership to bring everyone together to also promote awareness of how do we support our friends and neighbors living with diverse abilities. So congratulations, and I'm honored to be able to present some certificates to all the winners. Have a wonderful event. Fantastic job. Simon Cox would be proud. What an incredible day it's been. Congratulations to all the participants. In my books, you're all winners. I'd like to take a moment to thank the supporters, schools, teams, judges, presenters, the TFL staff, and you, the viewers. I'm Marco Pasqua, and it has been a pleasure to be your host this year. We look forward to seeing you again next year. Thanks everyone, that was a very exciting competition and well done to the winners. I'd like to thank all the students who contributed to this competition and thank you to our peers who supported the students in their designs. Well done everyone. I'd also like to thank the sponsors. Thank you RBC Foundation for your very generous sponsorship this year. Thanks also to the Kinsman Foundation of BC for their ongoing sponsorship of this competition since the beginning and also for the work that they do with the BC Rehab Foundation on the Open Door program. Thanks also to the Lom Foundation for their second year of sponsorship and thank you to new sponsors Shaw Sabi and KMPG. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank the people behind the scenes who made this competition happen. So our committee was made up of our chair and leader, Terry LeBlanc, thank you, Terry. We had Melody Burton, our volunteer, who brings event planning skills to the competition. I'd also like to thank technical staff, Wayne, Ian, and Taylor. Without you guys, this competition would not be in the same format as we saw it today. I'd also like to thank Richard Harrison, project manager, for keeping us moving through the different phases of the competition. And this year, judging with Ian and Wayne is Mackinda from the BC Children's Hospital. Thank you, Mackinda, for, for judging this year. I'm sure that was very difficult. And finally, I would like to thank everyone for watching this competition, and I look forward to seeing you next year at the Simon Cox Student Design Competition.
So in Technology for Independent Living is a nonprofit program that serves clients throughout British Columbia with physical disabilities. So what we do is use technology, home automation, uh, to make their lives more independent within their home environment. We have four trained biomeds, so some of the things they make from scratch and some of the things they, they use the Google Home, they'll extend the functionality of the Google Home so we reach further into the functionality of existing equipment. A real champion for us that us guys that needed a bit more independence and started to help people in the, out in the community. Well, I have a chronic progressive disease, so everything that I need changes over time. And now I use Siri and this telephone cell phone that clamps on to my tray and I can do it all without touching the phone. So this clamp has meant the earth to me. They came up with a device where I can, with a switch, move the bed up or down and uh, also, there's a drinking uh, water tube through the middle of it, so I can have water throughout the night. Till is there to pick you up. Like, guys from Tills are just, not just technicians, they are actually being my friends now. And it's just so easy to communicate with, and they listen very well, and I'm surprised there is not much people around the city know about them. These guys are awesome. You know, living independently is everything. It's, you know, it gives you a quality of life that you wouldn't have if you didn't have different, you know, types of environmental controls or, you know, staff. That freedom, the independence that everybody's looking for.